Good afternoon, this is Chris Brecher with the Simpler Stocks free video for August 4th, 2016. As you see, it's about 21 minutes after the close. I actually jumped on the live chat for the last 10 minutes just to go over some earnings ideas. I had to go to the doctor's office or I would have been on a lot earlier. Probably be on a little longer tomorrow if I get a chance. Uh, if everybody wants me on, you know we have a live chat from 10, uh, eight, uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern. And I like to get on the last hour or half hour at times, especially during earnings, to see if there's some things we could do. Actually, in the last 10 minutes, I mentioned about doing some kind of spread in Tesla, betting on it not doing a 13-point move. And as you see, it's done a three-point expected move, not 13. A lot of people that did iron condors in there did really well that I, I uh, suggested before the, uh, uh, before the close. We're also talking about one doing in Herbalife. Verdict's still out on that, but we were doing like a 66 iron fly. Basically in there, you're betting on the stock, not moving more than six points. It's moved two points. Another huge winner. So two for two in the last 10 minutes. So glad I got on. It's always quality, not quantity. So today what the market did is the ESs were up 425. Whole idea about this is about this is uh, the what took the market down yesterday. And were those factors present today? And the answer is a resounding no. So we'll get into that in a minute, but you have the ES is up 425, NASDAQ up 13. The Russell, when the ESs were down, the Russell was still up eight. The small stocks refused to go down. I had mentioned this yesterday, that it didn't make sense to me on if there was some uh, rumored bid activity in some drug stocks and the Russell 2000, which is represented by the TF Futures, they uh, is most of the Russell, a lot of the Russell has healthcare stocks in it. Why the Russell was down yesterday at all. And today, uh, obviously it's outperformed. Yeah, bonds only down seven, gold down a little eight, uh, crude oil up 158 in here, which is great to see because I had said that it was going to stop around a little under 40, and I'll show you why in a minute. Advanced decline all day start improved, and in there, actually, even when the market was selling off, this was still up 600, and I was short some spreads in the index. I actually covered and posted why I covered and sure enough, the market closed on its high for the day. Nikkei down 30 again, still sort of uh, weathering the Bank of Japan disappointment. You have the transports up 62. This is a big deal in here, and we'll get into that right now. So basically, what were the things that took the market down yesterday? Number one, put the ESs on the left. Like I had mentioned in the video yesterday, a lot of traders we're watching the transports. Transports on a daily look like they were going to break out a couple of days ago and all of a sudden started this little plummet. Now they're right at all the moving averages. A lot of traders thought that if it extended down even more, it would be the point of no return that would make, finally make the SPX or the ES go down. Well, today the transports reversed. As you see on here, not a great reversal that could still be a bear flag but put it on a 39 you can see the bounce now i'm not saying this is some wicked bounce but that little reversal helped sentiment on the spx i'm actually going to put the spx up here so you can get an idea of what i'm talking about put up a 39 minute of the spx see the rally see the rally you can sort of uh, get put two and two together what else helped the sentiment on the spx banks Yesterday, I had mentioned that with bonds selling off, it means the yield curve is steepening. It didn't make sense to me that uh, bank stocks, which uh, take advantage of a steeper yield curve, why they acted so bad yesterday. So this was another thing that pulled down the SPX. Today, they recouped all of their losses. That definitely helped sentiment. And the last thing that really helped sentiment, crude oil. Crude oil popped just like I thought it would. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about in here, on July 19th, I said that if crude oil broke 45, it was going sharply lower, probably to under 40. That's all in our email alerts that you get every night. I also said that under 40, there was support. Number one, oversold. Number two, I go on price support. 
Now, I know there's a fire line, and we can look at that, but I'm going on this. Put a 195 chart. It's easier to see. Go back here and zoom out, and I think this shows you where the first line of support area is. Support doesn't have to be an exact price, but there's a support area. And when you put this on a daily chart, you can see the support area. And we went right to that little candle right here. If I widen it out, you can see it a little better. There you go. Right to this area right there. Remember, you're combining a support area with an oversold condition, and that's a high risk time to short. You don't want to short in the hole. You want to short when it bumps up against resistance. So that definitely helped the sentiment in the market also. Other thing in here is the Russell. The Russell, like I said, finally recouped a lot of its sell-off from two days ago, but not all of it. Now, we saw this nice little bear flag and little head and shoulders right here. And as you can see, it broke down and broke down hard. Now, what a lot of traders are going to be watching now is a 195 and a daily in the Russell. And they're going to see whether this, all this was is the pause that refreshes until the next sell-off because now it's getting overbought in a downtrend. Or is it just testing su support and now it's going to start going straight up? I just don't have the answer yet on that. But I'll give you one idea in here. And the one idea is that you don't short in the hole. Don't short when it's oversold. You short when it rallies to resistance. And as you see, it's attempting to rally to resistance. This goes also for the ESs. All day today, we were talking about rallying from an oversold condition. Bad time to short. You want to short when it rallies up against resistance. And look where it stopped. Right at major resistance. And now it's getting overbought. If you had to pick its top, that's where you pick it. You don't try to short up here. You try to short when it rallies up against resistance, and that's what I wanted to show everybody. So as you know, we have a $7 trial for 30 days. A lot of that includes the email alerts, includes many other things in here, and let me take you to it. I'm actually stalling because I thought I had it up. It includes the premium videos, which are a lot more in depth. We go into specific stock ideas that you'll see in there. We also go into the chat room where 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern, like I mentioned, I go on live. Email alerts where I send out unusual option activity, stock trades and chart ideas, and index and futures charts. The unusual option activity, probably about four or five a week. I don't spit out 50 a week. I point out ones that work. And the overall, the track record's been pretty darn good. Stock trades and chart ideas, I try to post six before every opening. Index and futures charts try to post six every day. The other thing you get in here is the forum. It's more a message-based kind of communication. And then a meetup. Now, a meetup is about every 10 days. And what we do in there is, like the last one, is combining simpler indicators with powerful patterns, usually for an hour. Once those go in, we then have a library of all my seminars. A lot of other places charge $99 for each one of these. These come with your subscription. They're free as long as you're a subscriber, you can uh, access them. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you could take us up on our offer. Like I said, thousands have, and our retention rate is one of the highest in the industry. Have a great night, and I will talk to you tomorrow.